Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing Saturn and more specifically some of the new discoveries potentially solving several major mysteries from this beautiful planet. With the biggest mystery being Saturn's aurora and how they're generated. Because as the new study discovers, it seems that the aurora on Saturn right here might be generated in an entirely different way from a lot of other planets while also trying to solve one of the major mysteries originally discovered by the Cassini mission that arrived to Saturn a few decades ago. So let's discuss this in a little bit more detail and let's actually start with the Cassini itself. So back in 2004, the Cassini mission finally reached the system of Saturn. And during its time around Saturn, the Cassini mission managed to accomplish quite a lot. It also discovered quite a lot. And one of the major discoveries was a very interesting observational discrepancy compared to the Voyager 2 probe that was around Saturn back in 1981. These observations suggested that the length of the day on Saturn changed between 1981 and 2004. But because this is a really massive planet, it can just change its rotation in such a short period of time. And so in this case, the scientists realized that it was probably something to do with the measurements that we used on both missions. Now generally, when it comes to various distant objects, one of the ways that uh, the scientists usually measure their rotation, for example, is by tracking various emissions, such as, for example, radio emissions, coming from within the object. So, for example, when we see some sort of a repetition in the emissions from the object, it sort of assumes that it most likely completed a single rotation. But the radio emissions coming from Saturn in 1981 were somewhat different from the emissions in 2004, almost implying as if the planet changed its rotation speed. And since the internal rotation of the planet has to have stayed constant, something else was probably happening here. And so one of the possible solutions here was to figure out where all of these radio emissions are coming from. With the biggest contributors most likely being the aurora present in the polar regions of Saturn. And interestingly, one of the first observations from a few years ago suggested that, first of all, something different is happening in the North Pole and the South Pole of Saturn. Or essentially, the aurora in the Southern Pole were actually doing something slightly different from the ones in the North. Which by itself already presented the scientists with a strange mystery. It's as if a different mechanism was producing both of these aurora. And so, a lot of different studies in the last few years tried to explain these unusual discrepancies. For example, some of the studies tried to focus on the potential source of the aurora, such as maybe the moon Titan, the largest moon around Saturn, or more likely the moon Enceladus that's known to throw out a lot of material into the outer space, which can then maybe somehow produce the aurora observed. Now, this is not surprising because not so long ago, the presence of aurora on Jupiter were also solved in a very similar way. In this case, the emissions from the volcanoes on Io create quite a lot of radio emissions visible from planet Earth and also create quite a lot of aurora observable on Jupiter. And more recently, this paper that you can find in the description below has officially confirmed that there is a direct correlation between the strength of aurora on Jupiter and the magnetic field around the planet suggesting that it's actually the planet itself that's creating these aurora. And that's by itself somewhat strange from what we are used to here on planet Earth. Because here on Earth, aurora are essentially the result of the interaction of the magnetic field of our planet that doesn't really change very much with the very powerful emissions from the Sun, specifically of the highly charged particles. And as these particles hit the magnetosphere of our planet, they end up propelling downwards along the magnetic lines, producing the aurora as they interact with the upper atmosphere. And so in essence, unlike on Jupiter, it's really the Sun that's responsible for the aurora on Earth. And because of these similarities between Jupiter and Saturn, it was kind of assumed that maybe something similar is happening here on Saturn as well, especially because it's even farther away from the Sun, so it shouldn't really have these powerful aurora produced by the Sun or at least they shouldn't be as powerful as they were. At some point, it was even suggested that maybe it's actually because of the rings. Maybe the rings are responsible for creating these powerful aurora. But in the end, the new paper seems to have found the solution a little bit closer to the planet itself. And it also seems to be a mechanism that's never been seen before anywhere. It seems to be completely related to what's happening in the atmosphere of the planet. 
or basically it's the atmosphere of the planet and the motions inside the atmosphere that are somehow responsible for creating the aurora. In other words, it's the swirling of the atmosphere inside the planet that seems to generate these beautiful formations, which would make this the most unique way we've ever seen aurora being generated. Or in other words, the aurora on Saturn don't seem to have anything to do with the magnetosphere at all. They seem to be generated in a completely different way. And so unlike Earth, where it's generated through charged particles and the magnetosphere, or Jupiter, where it's generated through the magnetosphere and the volcanic emissions, Saturn seems to be doing its own thing. And in this case, the scientists were essentially able to link the changes in aurora to changes in the upper atmosphere, especially in the polar regions. Realizing that if the aurora here were driven by a magnetosphere, they would look slightly different. With the observations suggesting that the entire system is driven by the thermosphere of Saturn. And specifically, the winds in the ionosphere, or ion winds in other words, producing the effects. And because these winds also move really fast, up to about 3 km per second, they tend to essentially produce the effects we're observing. Or in this case, also producing a bit of a mystery. It's a bit uncertain why the vortex, or the aurora, seem to be a little bit more intense on the dawn side compared to the dusk side. With the only current explanation being that, well, maybe the winds there just move much, much faster, which seems to be the case. But the actual formation of these phenomena and how all of this works is obviously still a big mystery. More importantly though, because of the way this works, it sort of starts to slowly shift the aurora over time. In a sense, presenting an effect that suggests that the actual rotation of the planet is changing, when in reality it's the aurora that's just spinning a little bit differently. And all of this is because of the atmospheric interactions, nothing to do with the planet itself. Which of course solves that mystery from the Cassini probe and from the Voyager 2, the mystery that was bugging scientists for a few decades now. But the new mystery here is in regards to the origin of this phenomenon and more specifically why it's only happening in the north of Saturn. In this case, it's literally the northern lights. The southern part of Saturn does not have these effects or these unusual shifts. And by the way, in terms of the actual speed here, it seems that the aurora is shifting by about 500 meters per second, which obviously is quite a significant shift, especially if taken over long periods of time. But because of these discoveries, the scientists can now definitively say what the actual length of day on Saturn is. By observing tiny gravity perturbations in the ring system of Saturn, it was previously determined that the total length of the day on the planet here is approximately 10 hours, 33 minutes and 38 seconds. And that seems to be the most accurate observation and calculation so far. And so we cannot rely on radio emissions from this particular planet because the North Pole Aurora seems to be doing its own thing. But that by itself is a pretty incredible discovery. First of all, this implies that something like this is probably happening around a lot of different exoplanets out there. And second of all, there is quite a lot of explaining to do when it comes to how all of this is generated. More importantly, it helps us understand that the aurora is a very diverse uh, phenomenon. It seems to be created in a lot of different ways. And so far, many of the planets in the solar system have all found their own way to generate these beautiful phenomena. Which probably means that using a single term to describe all of them might not really be correct after all. But we'll talk more about these discoveries in regards to aurora in some of the future videos. So make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.